What's up, everyone? This is Oscar from Underdog. A friend of mine recently reached out because she was like, okay, Oscar, I'm going to get back into music production. I've blocked a whole day out. I'm going to just go super deep. It's going to be so much fun. And at the end of the day, I get a different message. I get a message that's something like, I hate myself. Everything I made is trash. I'm in a huge anxiety spiral. What's happening? Why is this happening? And how do I avoid it? Help. And I was like, aha, welcome to The Court is All Pit. You've discovered it. Let's talk about it. So the cortisol pit is what happens when you're making music and it's not very good or it's very much a work in progress. And so you're being exposed to a lot of unfinished ideas or maybe just like bad sound, bad music, things that aren't quite there yet. And so your body starts to have a stress response. Your body starts to have this response of like, oh, I kind of am not enjoying this, you know? Your mind might be enjoying it, but your body is like, ugh, this is a little bit awkward. And so while this is happening, your self-discipline keeps you sitting in your seat and it keeps you working while over time your body's stress response is going up. And by the end, suddenly you realize that you're having nothing but anxiety, intrusive thoughts, negative spiraling, just generally like a feeling of not being okay. Something is wrong. And you might have thoughts of like, this is shit. I am shit. This is not for me. Maybe I should give up music. Have I ever made anything of value? And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. You're having a lot of negative thoughts. Why is this happening? And so here's a four step plan for dealing with the cortisol pit. So step one is to recognize that it's happening. This means experiencing it probably a few times before your conscious brain goes, oh, I'm in the cortisol pit. The more you're able to just observe your own mind at work, the better you'll get at this. But being able to say, oh, I'm in the cortisol pit now, that's already gonna help you take the negative thoughts a little bit less seriously. This might also be your cue to just take a break and to maybe stop for the day so that you can get some distance from what you've done. But if you decide not to take a break, my second advice is be careful with what decisions you make because you're very likely to make bad decisions from this point forward. Once you're in the cortisol pit, you're in a bit of a destructive state of mind, an overly critical state of mind. And I believe that when you're trying to create art, you're trying to sort of put something out into the world and look at it with a, a loving and empathetic gaze that makes you fall in love with the thing that you've created. And that sense of attraction, of love, is kind of your compass for how to navigate forwards, right? But if your sense of love is completely obliterated by this dark cloud of negative emotions, then you're just going to shoot at whatever you've made and you're like, that sounds like an amateur production. That looks crap. That looks cheap. And it's not a great place to be. You need to be kind of falling in love with the stuff that you've made. So save your project in the state that it's in so that if you decide tomorrow that from this point onwards all your decisions were kind of crap, you can always come back to this save point, right? And now save a new version of your project, which is the version where you say, okay, I'm really going to push through this cortisol pit and see where it gets me. Then when you do, it comes to my third advice, which is to reset your composition to just the elements that you're sure that work. Very often we put together a whole bunch of elements that we are not so sure about and that uncertainty really adds up. So it's like building a house on a really shaky foundation. You design a musical element where you're like, mm, I'm kind of 80% sure that this is fine. And then you add another one where you're like, oh, I guess I'm also 80% sure that this is fine. And another and another and another. And before you know it, you have 0% certainty that what you've made is good. There's this idea that I'd like to borrow from mathematics, which is a little bit of a curveball. But whenever you do a, a scientific measurement, right, you have a certain margin of uncertainty, a little margin of error. Here, let's visualize it like this. Imagine you create an element of which you're 80% sure that it works. That means that there's a 20% chance that actually it's kind of crap and you're going to want to replace it. Then you add another musical element that's 80% certainly good, 20% chance that it's crap. Now your overall composition has a 40% chance of being crap. So the more uncertainty that you allow in all your individual elements, the more uncertainty you're putting yourself through on the main project as well. Now this was a woefully incomplete scientific summary. I mean, I'm sure someone with a mathematics background can actually explain it properly in the comments because really it's just a metaphor to say that uncertainty adds up. And so my advice to you is to reset to a point where you have maximum certainty where you're saying, no, I am actually sure that this works even with my overly critical mindset right now. And now my fourth and final advice is that there are two common calls culprits, which often put me in a negative spiral completely unnecessarily. One is volume balances and the other is staleness of my loop. Let me show you really quickly what I mean. So imagine I'm working on this techno composition and it's getting in pretty good shape. However, I start to get into the cortisol pit. So 
So when you're composing, you very often start with maybe the most important elements. And then over time, you start to add more and more elements. But because you're sound designing them, you raise their volume a bit too far because you're trying to pay attention to them. And over time, you get a real cluttered mess of ideas with no hierarchy or priority. And so you have to kind of reprioritize some of your sounds. It can also just be super exhausting listening to a loop where the hi-hat is just like 6 dB too loud. It's just fatiguing and you might not realize that you're suffering until it's too late. I mean, if I was sound designing these hi-hats, I'd want it this loud so I can pay attention to it. But listening to this for more than a minute, exhausting, right? So resetting all your volumes down to zero can be a good idea. Going inside of your groups and making sure that everything inside of the group is relatively correct compared to itself and then bringing things into a good volume can be a lifesaver. Sometimes it's also good to listen with a reference track to kind of see, oh yeah, this is where the relative volume of all my elements should be. And then the second big culprit is staleness. Staleness, aka your loop isn't going anywhere. No matter how good the quality of your loop is, after listening to it for about 10 times, you're going to be sick of it and your body's going to start to reject it. So once you've got some elements that kind of work well together, start duplicating your loop and then bring in some subtle changes into each phrase, like every eight bars or every 16 bars, make sure that there's a change and some good changes include taking away the kick drum, taking away all the bass elements, taking away the hi-hat, taking away the clap or adding back in a clap or a hi-hat so that there's a certain progression of the energy level of your elements. Things kind of go down, things kind of come up and it kind of happens in a more natural way and you start to get this dynamic push and pull feeling from your composition. It's as simple as selecting your loop and doing command shift D to duplicate. And maybe let's do that two more times. So we have four iterations of our loop in total and then simply start muting parts so that there's this progression And so that's my recipe for dealing with the cortisol pit. However, there is a different concept that might feel similar sometimes and which I think we should also address and you should not confuse the cortisol pit with this other concept. Now the discomfort that you feel from being in the cortisol pit is not the same as a different type of discomfort, which is a discomfort that I'm gonna be calling receptivity discomfort. You see, when you're in the creative process, there's going to be phases and moments when you don't know what's going on. You don't know what the track needs and you're feeling a bit uncomfortable because, well, there's an openness of options and no clear way forward. This is a very mentally present state of mind where you have to just sort of like in a yoga kind of a situation, be aware of everything and try not to snap into action immediately, but first try to generate some ideas or some options for yourself. It's almost like holding up an antenna and waiting for the lightning to strike. There's this book by Rick Rubin that I really recommend, which is called The Creative Act. I got it from my friend Anton. Thanks, man. Really appreciate this. And in it, it very much talks about the creative process as a state of opening yourself up to ideas that come to you and that move through you. But I do find that this can come with a certain level of discomfort because maybe I've learned in a way that being productive means making a plan, executing the plan, knowing what you're doing at all times, measuring, scheduling, optimizing. That's productivity, right? And so instead, allowing some space where it's like, I don't know what this is yet, is very difficult and it makes me a little bit uncomfortable. And on top of that, sometimes intrusive thoughts can come in then and disrupt you. One of those intrusive thoughts is, this isn't productive, I should do something more productive. Other thoughts might be about your legitimacy as an artist, who am I to do this? Shouldn't I just copy something that someone else has already done? There's a lot of little internal voices that come up and that try to pull you out of that state of just kind of openness and positive searching and risk activity and it's powerful if you can recognize those and in a mindful way sort of let them go not give them any energy and certainly not let them snap you out of your search for creativity so there's the cortisol pit and there's receptivity discomfort two uncomfortable feelings but coming from a different place emotionally if that makes sense does any of this resonate with you it's a little bit more philosophical but i hope that this can help my friend at least maybe leave a comment below to let me know what kind of psychological roadblocks that you've kind of found yourself coming up against and maybe how you've learned to navigate them so that we can learn from your experience as well otherwise just leave a comment to show me some love subscribe to the channel like the video as usual, check out one of my courses on the Underdog website. And until next time, stay producing, be good to each other, and take care. Bye-bye.